Hello, everyone. Hello, panelists, hello, students. Um, we're going to kick this off. Welcome to our virtual college fair. Just as a reminder, your camera and microphone are turned off so no one can see or hear you. If you have a question at any time, just click the Q&A button and it'll go right to the presenter. Please sign up for more sessions. There are many, many available. And a recording of this one will be available at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. Um, and now we are going to kick it off. And we're going to start with Washington. Go for it. Hi, everyone. My name is Allegra Fass from Washington College. Um, I have some slides I'm going to share with you today. So I'm just going to pull that up really quick. OK, so we are Washington College. We're located in Chestertown, Maryland, which is on the eastern shore of Maryland. Um, we are just across the Bay Bridge. Um, here are some quick facts about our school. We are a small school. We're under 1,100 students. Um, we have three campuses. We have the main campus where everyone lives and takes most of their classes. And then we have our waterfront campus with a brand new boathouse where you can check out um, canoes, kayaks, paddle boards, and go out onto the Chester River, um, which is an offshoot of the Chesapeake Bay um, that Chestertown is located right on. Um, and then we have a 5,000 acre river and field campus. Um, one of our most popular majors is environmental science. So this is um, huge for us to be able to have this untouched land that students can go out onto and, um, and learn a lot about. Um, we have 80 plus student run clubs and organizations. At, so there is something for everybody. And if your thing is not there, it's very easy to start a new club. Um, that's what's great about being such a small school is that it's very easy to be involved, to become a leader um, and to make friends and stuff like that. Um, also being a, a small school, we have a nine to one student to faculty ratio um, and a 12, our cl average class size is 12. So we are very small. This is not a place where you're going to fade into the background or fade away this is somewhere that you really can um, take ownership of of your education and get that kind of one-on-one -on -one experience um, we're also very focused on experiential learning here um, so we do a lot of internships about 70 percent of our students will include will complete um, one or more internships while they're with us um, and part of that is we are about a, an hour and a half away from both DC, Baltimore, and Philadelphia, and then less than an hour from Annapolis. So though we are in a rural location, we are definitely close to some metropolitan areas, which really um, triples or quadruples the opportunities for experiential learning. Um, about 90% of our students are employed or continuing their education post-graduation, so our returns are very good. And about 99% of our faculty have the terminal degree in their field. So usually that means a PhD, but um, we are an all undergraduate institution. So all of your classes are being taught by um, these people with the terminal degree in their field, um, your professors. So, and also all of the resources go towards us. So we have tons of funding for research um, and other projects that you can do um, while you're with us. These are our majors, minors, and concentrations. So we have tons to choose from, but you don't have to declare until your second year. Um, that's also what's great about being a liberal arts institution is that we really give students the flexibility um, to figure out what they wanna do and they don't really need to commit to that until their sophomore year. Um, so you can major in tons of different things, but your major won't um, necessarily lock you into um, a certain program. You can still participate in pretty much everything um, that any student can participate in, no matter what your major is. Um, I think our biggest ones are probably business and environmental science, like I mentioned before, um, but there's a really, really good wide array of things that people study here. Um, the five pillars that we use to kind of describe the experience at Washington College are meaningful connections. So we know that people are important. We treat our faculty as family. Um, this is something, this is a really, really strong community. And part of that is being in a small town. Um, learning without limits. So I mentioned the experiential learning and the internships. We really do focus hard on getting students out into the field of their choice and really learning about what it's like to live and work in those fields. 
Um, the written word is also a huge one. We are a writer's college. So we have opportunities for writers all across the spectrum of writing, um, whether that's something that you want to do for the rest of your life. You already know you want to be an author. We have opportunities for you. And if you're like, oh, she's talking about writing. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. We have opportunities for you too, but you need to know how to write to hold any kind of job because you need cover letters, emails, those kinds of things. Um, so we really do focus on that in every subject here, including the sciences. We're also a very historic town. So Chestertown was founded in 1706 and um, Washington College was founded in 1782. Uh, we were the first college founded in the new nation. We are the oldest college in Maryland. Um, so we really do um, focus a lot on history and learning about our unique history here. Um, and then the last pillar is environmental action, which as I mentioned before, we're very focused on the environment here. Part of that is our location being in a rural area. We have such beautiful land around us. We wanna learn how to preserve that. As for how to apply, um, we have three deadlines. You can apply early decision, which is binding um, and get your notification by December 15th. Early action, you can apply um, non-binding, but you get to apply a little early, get your notification a little early and have some time to apply for our scholarships or you can um, apply regular decision. The earlier you apply, the earlier, earlier you'll get your notification. So I would definitely recommend applying early action unless you have already bought the sweatshirts and you know that Washington College is absolutely for you, which we love as well. Um, I would recommend reaching out to your admissions counselor. Um, we split things up by territories. I personally have the state of Virginia and Anne Arundel County. Um, my colleague here who's answering questions in the chat, Keegan, has the entire West Coast as well as some counties in Maryland um, and, uh, the, and Philadelphia. Um, so definitely recommend reaching out to your admissions counselor to get more information, continue the conversation, um, learn more about our school, um, and just, just let us know what you're thinking. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. And now we're going to turn it over to St. John's College. Hello to everyone. My name is Drew Goodwin. I am an assistant director of admissions here at St. John's. Let me go ahead and get my slide deck all figured out. Awesome sauce. Well, I, like I said, am from St. John's College. Um, and the first thing that's important to know about St. John's is that we are America's third oldest college. We were actually founded in Annapolis, Maryland, not too far from Chestertown in 1696. Um, and in Santa Fe, New Mexico in 1964. Um, so that's the first interesting fact about St. John's. Um, you can see some of the you know, stats and things on the screen, but the two that I wanna highlight here for you are um, the fact that we are one of the top 20 colleges for LGBTQ plus um, students. Um, so we, in a recent survey, found that about half of our students, so 50% of our students, identify as something other than cisgender heterosexual. Um, we also have a very wide geographic birth, um, so 47 states and territories and 57 different countries, uh, making up about 18% of our population is going to be our international students, um, who we do adore so dearly. We do only have one program here at St. John's. It is one great books program. So this is roughly all the books that you'll read here at St. John's over your four years. Um, you can see that they range from Homer's The Iliad, Euclid's Elements, Einstein's Theory of Relativity. Um, so our students are really studying everything. Um, they're not going to major in anything, but they are going to get this very well-rounded curriculum that is really supposed to you know, develop them into young people who are capable of doing anything that they set their minds to. So if you see a lot of these things, maybe you've already read a couple of these, maybe you want to read a couple of these, we might be a good fit if this reading list is kind of like the best thing ever for you. Around the table, we are all educators. What I mean by this is that our entire program is going to be entirely conversation based. So that means, you know, the only lectures you will attend will be for fun on Friday nights, which is totally a thing at St. John's. Um, and that also means that all of our opinions are important. We have this really wide variety of students and we bring them to St. John's so that they can have really intense, interesting, amazing conversations around the table. And we can really all teach each other something about life, about what it means to be a human and kind of the way that we see the world working in our minds. Um, and so because of that, while we do have faculty members, their job's not to tell you the answer, their job is to help guide you in this discussion and really help you come to your own conclusions and not be told, you know, what exactly you're supposed to think, but rather learn how to think for yourself. 
And this is a wonderful quote that I have here from one of our um, recent graduates, Redia Warku, who is an international student from Ethiopia. The curriculum is pre-selected, so you don't have freedom in class selection. What you have instead is limitless freedom within the classroom. So generally on these books on the right hand side, you can see kind of the breakdown of our curriculum. This is the same curriculum that every single student at St. John's will take. But the, again, the, going back to that conversation that you'll have, there's no limits on where that conversation gets to go. As a student in that class, you can direct that conversation one way or the other. When you're reading Shakespeare, if you notice a lot of the anti-Semitic tropes that come up, talk about it, say, hey, this you know, is a very important work, but we wanna sit here and talk about the you know, racial uh, issues or the sex issues or the gender issues that we find in these different texts. So really having that freedom in the classroom to explore and question and figure things out is really at the core of what makes our program our program. Like I said, we do have two campuses. Um, I am currently based on our Annapolis campus. Um, and so we are in Annapolis, Maryland. We have about 531 miles of coastline to explore. We are the sailing capital of the world. Um, we are also host the Annapolis Cup. So it is the largest croquet match in the entire country. It is like the nerdiest, coolest fact about St. John's that we do have the largest croquet match on our campus every single year against the US Naval Academy in which we thoroughly trounce them, which is very exciting that we get to beat the Naval Academy at something because you know rowing and sailing, they're pretty good at, they usually beat us, um, but croquet is something we can manage to, uh, to beat them at. If you are feeling, you know, you wanna go farther afield and head to the mountains, we can also have you on our campus in Santa Fe, New Mexico which is the third largest art market in the country. So lots of museums, lots of art galleries, lots of indigenous art there as well. Um, we are, the, it is the Chile capital, capital of the world. So if you like spicy um, in Santa Fe, there's really just one question. Um, do you want red, green or Christmas chilies? Um, so uh, the Christmas is both the red and the green kind of mixed together. If you're also super outdoorsy and want to go ahead and, you know, hiking into the mountains after class, we have about 478 hiking and biking trails that are located just outside of our beautiful campus in New Mexico. So in addition to these two campuses, we do have three different ways to apply. I won't read all of this off to you because um, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, but I do want to highlight our supplemental essay. So our supplemental essay, every student will have to write it. It is on a book, go figure, and it will be on any book you want. Some of the best essays that I have ever read were from students who did it on like Paddington Bear or Dr. Seuss or Harry Potter. Um, so you don't have to do it on Aristotle unless you really love Aristotle that much, which is not unusual for our students. So that's totally fine as well. And um, we are, are also um, test optional. We've been test optional since 1978. Um, so if you have them, great. If not, meh. And with that being said, I do want to turn our attention, though, to this question of what do you do with this liberal arts degree from St. John's when you talk about the meaning of life and other things for four years? And the answer really is anything and everything. Um, so here's a, a few of our alumni. Um, the one who's most highlighted is Miss Paul Green, um, who uh, has spent time at the New York Times, as well as being the editor in chief of the Huffington Post. Um, and she's currently the head of content at Gimlet Media, which is really um, important uh, podcasting company. Um, but you can also see that there are folks in physics, biology, politics, arts, literature, law. Um, law in particular is actually a really great um, avenue for our students who do have 100% acceptance rate to law school. Um, and that's a now 12 year average. Um, so since 2010. Um, so really wide variety of things. So it is the single same education that every student at St. John's will go through. But what they do with that education really has the, those infinite numbers of possibilities. Um, so with that being said, I do wanna make sure I am watching my time. So I appreciate y'all so much for having me um, here today. And if you have any questions, let me know in the Q&A. Thanks so much. Kenzie, you're muted there. Who's uh, who's up next? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Now we're going to turn it over to Towson. Oh, it was me. How about that? I had no idea. <laughs> Happy to, uh, to handle the assist. Um, so hey, everybody. I'm Dan Zwacki. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Towson University. Um, I'm going to set my clock because I tend to go on and on about this place. Uh, and so let's uh, dive right in, y'all. Uh, Towson University, we are what we say the fastest growing university in Maryland. We have 
seen an incredible growth uh, in the students who are increasingly choosing Towson as their first choice destination here in the great state of Maryland. Um, and let's talk a little bit about, about how we got here in the first place, right? So we were founded 1866 as the state's first teaching college and still have tremendous historic strengths in education. Uh, produce more educators than any other college or university here in the state. Um, but that idea of teaching, of education, being at the heart of what we do really permeates all the different programs. Uh, we talk a lot about our undergraduate education, the connections that you'll make with your professors and faculty, even at a pretty big school, right? We have 22,000, almost 23,000 students, including about 20,000 undergraduate students. Um, so we are absolutely a, a large public university, um, but definitely really pride ourselves in that personal connection you get to make with your faculty and a lot of that, frankly, going back to that founding of the education school. Um, we since have grown. We have six distinct colleges, lots you can do at Towson, one of those great things about being a bigger school, lots of majors, lots of minors, lots of programs. Um, we're also really proud of the diversity of our university. And we are increasingly one of the most diverse schools, not only in the state of Maryland, but in the entire country, uh, and really proud to reflect the backgrounds, the uh, ex lived experiences of Maryland, um, and also of the nation and the world in which we live. Uh, and so we, we are really proud of the ways that our students come together in different communities. We talk a lot at Towson how, especially for students from Maryland, you are absolutely going to see other people who have very similar lived experiences from you at Towson, right? They might even live in the same neighborhood as you, right? They look like you, they have similar beliefs to you, uh, similar lived experiences, but you absolutely are also going to meet people who have totally different life experience from you, right? They grew up in a completely different part of the state or a different part of the country. We have students from over 30 different countries as well. You're gonna have this terrific opportunity to really explore uh, what it means to grow up in a, a diverse world um, at Towson University, and we love that. Uh, we also love where we're located, um, being right just north of Baltimore, Maryland, right in the heart of, DC, of uh, Maryland, rather. Uh, we are just a few miles away from downtown Baltimore. Incredible opportunities there for students when it comes to internships, certainly for entertainment, for shopping, uh, for terrific restaurants. Um, a lot of our students enjoy taking the Tiger Shuttle, our little Tiger Ride Shuttle, that takes them to and from Baltimore, um, but also takes students to and from all sorts of really important destinations, right? We're a very quick drive uh, for where I live, just outside Washington, D.C., right? I commute to Towson every single day and don't have any problem doing so uh, because of that easy access. Um, we're very close to Philadelphia and New York City, especially by way of train. Um, many of our students, especially if they're from those areas, taking the trains uh, to get home for breaks, but also, again, great places to go visit, great places to have killer summer internships, things like that, all really easily accessible from campus. Um, and we also love the community we're in, right? As our own university has grown, there's tremendous investment in not only campus, but in the community around us. Um, so in Uptown Towson, is just north of campus, so Uptown Towson, um, it's a tremendous college town in its own right. Um, as, as you can see, there's over a billion dollars uh, being invested on and off campus, and our students absolutely reap the benefits of that. Um, there's tremendous shops and restaurants, there's really great bars, there's Towson Hot Bagels, which is a, a lifestyle, uh, if you talk to our students about it. Um, there's concerts, but there's also ways that Towson connects in the community. Our Institute for Wellbeing, with its um, uh, public-facing um, health centers and centers for uh, adults with autism and audiology centers for members of the community. The Towson University of the Army actually just had its groundbreaking today. Um, it's a small business incubator and startup, um, really focusing on local businesses in Towson and having strong partnerships with that. Um, so lots of students do in our immediate community, uh, not just on campus. Um, let's talk a little bit about those academics. As I said, lots you can do at Towson. And again, really proud of that personalized approach we take to your learning here. Uh, many students are really surprised to see how small our classes really are. The vast majority of your courses are going to have fewer than 30 students in them. A good chunk of them are going to be smaller than 20 students. Um, and that's, again, really kind of regardless as to what you study here. Uh, we really, again, pride ourselves on, on you spending time sitting next to your professors, sitting next to your classmates, uh, and being able to really engage with each other and really enhance your learning that way. That is especially true in the Honors College, um, a really stellar way uh, to take your Towson experience to that next level, to engage deeply in the liberal arts, not unlike uh, what my colleague with St. John's is talking about, um, courses that are really designed to make you think really critically and develop uh, strong communication skills and strong discussion skills that will carry you regardless as to what your main academic major is. The Honors College has this really great tight-knit community on campus as well. They live together throughout their first year and can continue to live together on campus throughout all four years that they so choose uh, and, and certainly bond very deeply over that. So definitely look at the Honors College as you're, you're diving into TU. Um, let's talk about what you're gonna do outside of the classroom. So much of what you do in college, especially at a traditional residential campus like Towson is spent out of the classroom, right? So what are you gonna get into? Uh, lots is the answer. Uh, pretty much anything that you already like to do, all the new stuff you're going to discover when you get to Towson. We've got it going on here. Uh, as Division One school. We have 19 varsity level sports competing 
uh, again, schools all over the country. Uh, and we also therefore have a very competitive club and um, uh, intramural sports program as well. So lots of our students like to stay active, sit involved and, and uh, compete together with their friends. Uh, we also send our students all over the globe um, when there is not a, a global pandemic. Um, we are really proud to, to have over 700 study abroad programs that our students participate in every single year. Uh, so you pick a point on the map and you're gonna be able to go engage with that. And I think that really enhances just the kind of cultural approach that our students have to their learning. Like we know how deeply interconnected the world is. We understand what it means to be a global citizen. But when you go to see that and experience that for yourself and come back to campus, that's a really powerful experience. It really, really enhances the community for all. Um, and so wherever you look, wherever you go to college at the end of the day, uh, absolutely looking to study abroad. It's an incredible opportunity. Um, but there's so much going on when it comes to student life. Um, we are a residential campus. I said that is part of the reason we are so heavily involved and have so much uh, energy and excitement going on on campus. Many, many of our students living on campus, almost all of our first year students, uh, many of our sophomore students, about a third living on campus proper, about a third of our undergraduates live within a mile of campus. So very, very close. And about another third um, are true commuters coming from you know, 20 minutes or so further away um, throughout the Maryland community. So lots of great places to live, got lots of great places to eat, all the things you come to expect from a, a traditional college experience. We are really proud of the outcomes for our students, uh, the ways that they are able to, even during COVID, um, find ways uh, to have Towson prepare them for the workforce or for graduate school or for formal service. I'm doing something um, that TU really helped them uh, to pursue and we're really, really proud of that. Uh, so many of our students, about nine out of 10 reporting, doing an internship or research experience, something like that while a student. So those hands-on learning opportunities absolutely out there for you. Um, and uh, a quick list of some of the most popular employers for our students. Um, let's talk very quickly about how you get here. We're on the Common application here at Towson. It's actually new this year to be on the Common app, which is fantastic. Um, very, very easy to fill out the Common app and apply for us. Um, we are also a test optional institution. I um, adopted that during COVID-19 and will continue to do so. Uh, we really find that test optional is a great uh, policy for us. We know that some students are strong test takers and some are not. And you can think on your own scores and look up our averages online, everything to decide if you want to submit your scores. I mentioned the Honors College earlier does have a separate application within the Common App, a separate essay that you submit. Um, you should apply by December 1st. It says January 15th there as well for regular decision, but ignore that. December 1st, early action, apply by December 1st, considered for both scholarships and admission. Um, so that's really, really critical. Uh, and also the FAFSA, more than six out of 10 of students at Towson University are receiving a need-based grant uh, to attend TU. Um, and so that's really, really important. Even if you and your family uh, wouldn't consider themselves someone who you know, readily would be available to find a need-based financial aid, uh, many of our students find that we're able to be an even more affordable option um, as well as being one of the most affordable schools in the state already uh, for Maryland residents. Um, that becomes that much more so when you factor in our scholarships and need-based aid. So December 1st, submit your FAFSA, have all that really be available to you. That is my time. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and enjoy the next school. Thanks, Dan. Up next, we have St. Mary's College of Maryland. Dan, if you're speaking, we you might be on mute. I am so sorry. I was talking and talking. Um, okay, let's try that again. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. So sorry. I gave like half my introduction. Okay, here we go. Yes, <laughs> my bad. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, oh, now. And I said it was a little odd because I can't see myself anymore. But anyway, uh, sorry about that. I'm Tammy Wolfson. Um, I am from St. Mary's College of Maryland. I'm regional admissions director. So I work out of my territory. I cover Montgomery and Howard County. Uh, in the chat answering questions is Anoy Hindle, my colleague, um, who is also a recent alum. So he's good for answering questions about student life. And he covers Calvert County, I believe the Eastern Shore. Um, but we all work together. Uh, so. St. Mary's College of Maryland. We're located in historic St. Mary's City. Uh, we're about two hours from Baltimore and from DC, and we are on the water. You're going to see a lot of water in the slides. Um, <clears throat> we are a public school. We're part of the 
Maryland system, university system. Um, we get our name from our historic location, not necessarily from people who sometimes think that we're private or religious based, but we are in historic St. Mary's City. Um, we are a little bit different in being a, as a public school though, in that um, we are small. We are about 1500 students and we are chartered as an honors college. So what that means to us is a little different than in high school. Um, in high school, honors means more work or harder. Um, for us, it means you have a little bit more control and say in your education. Um, so we have nine to one student to faculty ratio. Almost all of our classes are seminar based. It's much more common to have a professor sitting like this um, chatting with you than standing up in front of a big lecture hall. We don't have any big lecture halls, um, but being a public, so we, we operate very much like a private liberal arts school. Um, but the difference is we are public. Um, so that translates into more affordability, but also um, things like diversity and access are, are very much uh, at the forefront of who we are. Um, so we we are a liberal arts school. You're going to have four credit classes. You're going to take four at a time instead of the more common three credit classes taking five at a time. So you're going to have a little more time in class each week. Um, so in addition to your, the, your major, we have 75 academic programs. Um, in addition to your major and your core classes, we're gonna encourage you to get out of the classroom and do an internship, study abroad, do research. Um, that's always been a big part of who St. Mary's is. Um, but a few years ago, we kind of defined what that meant to us and gave it a name. We call that learning through experiential and applied discovery or LEAD. Um, and we added a uh, professional development curriculum to that. So there's, I believe it's a one credit class freshman year, one credit class sophomore year. So not a lot of work outside of the classroom. Um, but if you complete those uh, requirements and that's gonna be like resume building and networking skills and career exploration, um, we will promise you, we call it the Honors College Promise, we will promise that you will have one of those experiences. 89% uh, of our students do have one of those experiential learning experiences. Many have more than one. There's tons to do on our campus. Again, we're waterfront. So there's paddle boarding, kayaking, sailing. Um, we have River Center staff who are there to teach you if you don't know how to, um, if you've never used the equipment before, you just show your ID, there's no charge. Um, we, I always, I want to always keep the slide in here because it reminds me that um, one of the things we always ask students is what can you do here that you can't do anywhere else? We offer underwater archeology. span um, so we're going to scuba certify you in the pool where it's nice and safe and we can see you. And then you can sit, go out into the river. Uh, St. Mary's was a historic port for hundreds of years and all kinds of boats came through and dropped artifacts off um, side and you can go out into the river and find those things. Um, we are again adjacent to historic St. Mary's City. So there is all kinds of history. There are archaeological digs going on. Um, it's a really interesting, exciting place to be. Um, we also have other things, other ways to stay active besides the river. We have 21 D3 sports. Um, our sailing team is D1 and um, incredibly accomplished. Uh, we also have intramural sports, club sports. Um, so there's lots of ways to stay active on campus. There are also about 70 clubs and organizations. Um, come in, any common interest is there for you. We are um, pretty much, we are very much a traditional residential campus. We guarantee housing all four years. So students are on campus on the weekends. They are attending athletic things. They're participating in athletic events. They are going to concerts. They, their club activities, very active campus. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the requirements, you can find those online, um, but I will talk about our deadlines. We have three, three sort of programs, uh, two deadlines. You can apply November 1st, early action, the most common, we'll hear by January 1st. We also offer early decision. If you're 100% sure, I think someone said you've already bought the sweatshirt. Um, if you're 100% sure that St. Mary's is the place for you, the same deadline is November 1st. Um, but you'll hear the earliest, you'll hear by December 1st, or you can wait for regular decision. Uh, we really don't have a preference. You don't have to apply early to be considered for merit scholarships. We are test optional. We became test optional prior to the pandemic. So that's not, that's more of a philosophy than um, in reaction to the absence of the ability to test. And you don't have to um, submit test scores in order to be considered for merit scholarships. 
Uh, so we like to say that we're uncommonly worth it. 94% of the most recent class received some kind of grant or scholarship fund some, from St. Mary's. So that is um, free money. That's money that does not have to be paid back. We have the lowest uh, student indebtedness of any of the schools in the state. So that's going to be the total debt that students graduate from with. And I think other people have um, mentioned the outcomes rate. It's really something you want to look at. Now, it's the percentage of students within six months of graduation who are either employed um, in a related field or in graduate school. And we're proud to solidly be in the 90s. Um, even during a pandemic, uh, we were 94%. Uh, so I don't think there's time for questions, but there are definitely somebody in the chat to be um, answering your questions. Cool. Thank you very much. And next we have UMBC. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Because I do also have a PowerPoint presentation. So hello everyone. Um, my name is Brittany Martin. I am the admissions counselor at University of Maryland, Baltimore County. So here's my contact information and don't worry about writing it down. It will probably be put in the chat. So I kind of want to go over just a bird's eye view of UMBC. And so we have a lot of buildings from our events center all the way down to our performing arts and humanities building. And another good thing about our institution is that we are kind of on a structure where you'll have one half that is academics and the other half that is residential. Um, we are in the middle. We're about 15 minutes from Baltimore City and we're about 45 minutes from DC. So I like to call those places the two lit places. So if you get the opportunity, you don't have to go too far. And also we are actually one, I believe the youngest, one of the youngest uh, schools in the university systems of Maryland. I believe we were founded in 1966. So if you do have the opportunity to come visit our campus, we will have some in-person events happening. Um, you can definitely check our website. So I'm not going to read all of this, but this is basically UMBC as a, at a glance. And so um, we have roughly over 10,000 students. So I would like to say we're like a medium-sized institution, and we're also a liberal arts institution, and a lot of people don't realize that. And as far as our ratio, we have about 17 to uh, 17 to 1. So again, we're kind of close knit, as you can hear some of our other, my other colleagues talk about their institutions. And I'm not going to lie, being in a close knit is definitely great. Um, popular majors that we have, they range from computer sciences all the way down to social work. And we, in addition, have our pre-professional program. So if you're interested in nursing or dental hygiene, we do have the pre-professional program for that um, particular uh, pro, um, program. As far as athletics, we have 17 Division I teams from basketball all the way down to track and field. And I will say we take pride as we were recently um, noted as beating the number one seed in basketball, which was Virginia. So again, we take a lot of pride in our athletics and we have over 270 plus clubs and organizations. So applying to our uh, school, we are part of the Common App. And so again, making sure that if you are interested, the Common App is the right place, as well as we are text optional. So if you are interested in not sending in your test scores, just make sure that you click yes on the application question where it says, do you wanna be considered for test optional program? As well as we're looking for two letters of recommendation and we have only two deadlines. We have our early action, which is November 1st, and we highly encourage students to apply to be considered for scholarships, and our regular decision is February 1st. And I believe I probably was probably the quickest, but that is all I have. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat, and I do have my colleague, Caitlin, helping me out. Thanks so much. Uh, I guess it's my turn since <laughs> we finished a little bit earlier there. So I'll go ahead and start by sharing my slides. Hi, everyone. My name is Lambert Ai. I'm an admissions counselor from the University of Maryland. Um, and I'm very excited to join you all today to be able to share a little bit more about our campus um, and what we have to offer to you all. While I figure out these technical difficulties, please bear with me. Um, 
essentially the University of Maryland is the state's flagship. So we are the largest institution in the state of Maryland. Um, we were founded in 1856 and being the largest institution, it's essentially what you're gonna think of when you imagine college from the movies, you're gonna have the large lecture halls. Um, but the great thing about it is that your class sizes actually get smaller. So despite having a really large campus, we still maintain an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, let me pull up these slides here real quick, just so that we know we're on track to be able to. One second. That is not it. You know, we're going to try something. There we go. I'm just gonna share the whole screen with you all. There we go, all right. Okay, so what does the University of Maryland offer its students? With over 33,000 undergraduate students, you're gonna be able to live on campus. Every student that confirms the enrollment by May 1st is guaranteed housing on campus. So majority of our students live on campus. It's a beautiful campus, it's vibrant. Um, there's lots to see, lots to do. Um, with the campus as big as ours, like I said, we're gonna have a lot to do. So we have over 800 clubs and organizations on campus for our students to participate in, as well as 19 division one athletics for them to go to. All the sports games are free. We're part of the big 10. So you get to watch us play against big schools like Ohio State, Michigan and Michigan State. Um, the rivalry is great, whether it's football, basketball, lacrosse, you name it, we're very competitive and we're here to stay. If you played sports in high school and you were like me, you wanted to relive your glory days, we have club intramural sports at uh, Maryland as well. So many of our students actually participate. Sometimes you might even see your professor out there on a co-ed team, so be nice. If you see an elderly person out there on a basketball court and don't dunk on them. Um, about 20% of our students participate in Greek life on campus. So whether it's academic fraternities and sororities or social Greek life, um, pre-professional, whatever it's, it looks like for you, um, there's something on campus for students to get involved in. Like I mentioned, the University of Maryland is located in College Park, Maryland. It is a college town and there's lots to do. Our campus itself is just within 10 minutes from the College Park Metro, so you can easily access DC. We're just about 45 minutes to an hour away from Baltimore and Annapolis, so you have access to everything that Baltimore has to offer, as well as Annapolis. Not to mention DC is right in our backyard, so when it comes to internship and job opportunities, our students are the most competitive, they're next to none. The DC, Maryland, Virginia area, which is where Maryland really prides itself on, on taking ownership in, in really this marketed area, is an area that a lot of major companies, a lot of journalism hubs, a lot of um, health fields, even government, literally DC is right in our backyard. And so those opportunities are there and those recruiters are literally on our campus all the time recruiting from our talented pool of students. So we definitely take a lot of pride in that. When it comes to our most popular majors, you'll see on the screen, we have engineering, biological sciences, business, computer science, and government and politics. With the exception of business, all of these are what we call direct transfers in terms of our limited enrollment program. So if you apply to Maryland and you're not admitted into a program that is one of our limited enrollment programs, you can work with our advising office and our letters and science department to then directly go into it. Business does have, have a competitive review, however, so, if you have more questions about that, we can discuss it. It's a little bit more intricate than it is right now with the inches of time, I won't go into it, but those are our most popular majors. And then with a the campus as big as ours, you may be wondering, you know, what does diversity look like? So we have a 45.8% student of college population. You're gonna have at least one student from every county in the state of Maryland, at least one student from every state in the United States, Students represent 123 different countries. So you're gonna have students from all walks of life speaking different uh, languages from all kinds of backgrounds. When it comes to our application, we're on both the Common App and the My Coalition. So whichever one you're using to apply, um, just pick one and then you'll apply to Maryland that way. Our early action deadline is November 1. It is the priority deadline for consideration for admission. It is the only deadline that you'll be automatically reviewed for scholarship. And it is the best deadline for consideration of programs like our honors, our honors college, scholars program, and other living and learning programs as well. So if you want to be admitted to Maryland, if you want the best chance of admission, you definitely want to apply early action. Um, and it's non-binding. So you get all the benefits of applying early without the commitment. We do have a final deadline in January of during, uh, a final deadline. In January of January 20th, it is our regular decision deadline. Um, so if you miss our early action deadline, that is a final chance for you. We don't have a minimum GPA requirement. Um, however, 
Um, most competitive freshman applicants have mostly A's and B's in their transcript. Uh, if they have a C or so, that's fine. However, we like to see that they bounce back and they're able to have a positive trend on their transcript. Uh, our most recent incoming class, uh, in terms of the application pool, we, have, we had a little bit over 49,000 applications, but our incoming class is only 4,600 students. So we have to make a lot of really fine distinctions when deciding students, deciding on which students to admit and which ones not to admit. And as a result, we don't just look at your grades. We know that your grades are important, but we take on this holistic review process that takes into account 26 different factors. That takes into account things like your family's educational background, how many languages you speak at home, your special skills and talents. We wanna know if you play an instrument, are you competitively um, an athlete, right? Do you, do you uh, have any special skills that can make you stand out? We want those type of students on our campus as well. So we wanna learn about those things through your essay, through your short answers. We want strong recommendation letters from the people that you, uh, that, that you look up to, your mentors, um, and even your teachers and your coaches and all of that. So um, we have a full breakdown of our application checklist on our website. I highly encourage you all to check that out. It's admissions.umd.edu. Everything is really easy. It's always something.umd.edu. So um, with the, when it comes to test optional, we are test optional for the fall and spring for 2022 and 2023. So um, if you are not confident with your test score or you're questioning your test scores, I always tell students you might want to um, steer towards uh, the lane of caution and just wave it. If you are happy with your score, you pretty much know what that is. You're, you're confident with, with what that number looks like. Then you definitely want to send it in and you want to send it in straight from the College Board or the ACT if it's your standardized test scores. I shouldn't be missing anything else. Um, but if I am, definitely shoot me a question in the Q&A section. Um, I'll be more than happy to address it. My contact information is right there. Send us an email to applymaryland at umd.edu, as well as our website is admissions.umd.edu. We're also in person now. So if you want to come and take a tour, um, we have admissions representatives in person who can help you with that, as well as we have a self-guided tour on campus. And we're available via phone to also answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Um, Thank you for bearing with me as I dealt with all of my technical difficulties uh, and everything that went along there. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation. Oh, folks, did we lose Mackenzie? Is that Hello? Oh. Well, sorry, guys. I've been trying to talk. Oh. Might be having some connection issues. Yeah. I thought I was the only one. Oh. <laughs> Lambert, you're, uh, you're still sharing your screen there, my dude. Okay. So sorry about that, guys. Um, well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, students, very much. It's been great to have you. Um, give me just a moment here. So after you close, there will be a quick survey. It's about five questions. If you could fill that out, would, I, we would greatly appreciate it. It'd be very, very helpful. Please sign up for more sessions. This is just one of the many that are available. And a recording will also be available at strivescan.com slash PCACAC. So thank you presenters and thank you students and have a great rest of your night.